and I, I would like to say that I'm really delighted to, to have this opportunity to speak today. Uh, and I know that you have uh, already, um, you know, um, been engaged in a series of uh, seminars on trafficking Sorry. in human beings. Um, I look forward to contributing to this, uh, to this discussion. Uh, and um, I, I will start saying that my focus will be labor exploit trafficking for the purpose of labor exploitation, not only because it is uh, the least addressed form of trafficking compared to compared to trafficking for sexual exploitation. Uh, all the anti-trafficking policy actually started in the 90s uh, and was uh, you know, uh, targeting um, trafficking for sexual exploitation, not only for this reason, but also because all the sources indicate that trafficking for labor exploitation is growing. And uh, of course, uh, from anecdotal uh, evidence, uh, we uh, see, we notice, that in certain sectors, uh, trafficking uh, for labor exploitation is becoming uh, a sort of systemic component of the labor market. And this is extremely worrying trend. Um, what are these sectors? Uh, agriculture, uh, construction, domestic work, uh, the whole uh, tour uh, tourism um, uh, industry, including a hotel, but uh, very much uh, also restaurants. Uh, and what is trafficking? When we talk about trafficking in human beings, what are we talking about, especially concerning sec uh, labor exploitation? Actually, we are talking about, uh, I will go back to this, uh, to this uh, in a few minutes, uh, what the, the emphasis is on exploitation. The emphasis should not be put on the transfer of the person. I will go back to that, but uh, for the moment I will only say that we uh, um, recognize, we identify a, a case of trafficking when we see a person severely exploited, which means a person obliged to work uh, 12, 14, even 16 hours a day for a few euro, or for no salary at all, as it happens in cases, in many cases of domestic servitude. The person is obliged to be at, at, the, at this complete disposal of the employer 24 hours a day, and she, because most, mostly is about women, they don't receive uh, any, any salary. Uh, people deprived of their documents, people constantly under control, uh, very often uh, subject to debt bondage. Um, and this debt bondage uh, could be uh, could arise from the travel, from the uh, the, uh, the debt um, connected with the, with the move, movement of the person, but could be also be created in the in the country of destination. Um, for example, intermediaries show up suddenly and uh, and offer to place the person in a certain uh, in a certain employment in a certain job. Uh, and promise a certain salary, but the reality is completely different. So the the, the work is extremely uh, heavy, uh, the working hours are extremely long. The salary is there on paper, but on paper in theory. But the intermediary keep keeps the the the, the major the, the a large amount of this salary. So they end up in agriculture, for example, and they earn uh, nine euro a day. We are talking about this. Um, and they are uh, accommodated in a very you know, degrading, uh, degrading condition, uh, constantly under control. This is the new slavery. When we talk about slavery, we are talking about people obliged to work without any reward and without any possibility to uh, realize uh, the, 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 the aim, the, the, the goal, the purposes uh, they had in mind when they left their country. And very often it's about supporting their families, supporting their children, supporting their parents. Um, 
this uh, form of uh, what we call, for good reasons, uh, uh, contemporary uh, slavery uh, has been increasing without any significant institutional response for years. And this is the reality we are confronted now. Against this background, we have, an, um, according, for example, to the, to the uh, report uh, every year the um, State Department, the US State Department uh, issues, we have uh, around 5,000 prosecution, prosecutions a year. And you can imagine, we, we don't know actually what is the real size of trafficking, it's completely underground. We, uh, we only have the assessment of uh, uh, the International Labour Organization, uh, which are very uh, conservative uh, estimates. And uh, these estimates indicate 12 million people uh, in forced labour as a consequence of trafficking. I repeat, conservative estimates. Um, so you can understand very well that uh, the, you know, the response is uh, not at all commensurate with, uh, with uh, the estimated scale of trafficking uh, in the OSCE region, which includes many important country, destination countries. Mm -hmm. So we can think that the phenomenon is, uh, uh, is a sig significant. And I take this opportunity to say that the Irish president, uh, chairmanship of the OSCE gives uh, uh, an opportunity to bring forward to, to make sig significant step forwards in that, this struggle in the whole, uh, in the whole um, OSCE uh, region. Um, so what is needed? Why, for the, after many years of anti-trafficking action, which have produced something, I don't want to give the impression of uh, underestimating the importance of, of what have been achieved, because we have international instruments in place, we have a strong uh, sta um, legal standard agreed uh, at the international level, at the UN level, the same standard uh, has been adopted by the Council of Europe and now by the uh, European Union with the recent, uh, uh, the recent directive. We have st systems in place, almost in every country, there is a system to assist Victim, but the problem, the real problem, is that this uh, legislation, including the criminal provisions and the provisions aimed at assisting and supporting victims, are very rarely applied. So we have a number of, uh, uh, a low number of criminal proceedings, a low number of victims identified and assisted. Uh, a report um, was issued uh, in 2010, if I'm not wrong, of, by the European Commission, indicating that uh, as far as third country nationals are concerned, there, are, th th there is an average of uh, residence permits granted on grounds of mm, mm, trafficking mm, between one and 20 a year. And again, you can understand very well that this is not uh, an institutional response which is, can be considered uh, meaningful. Uh, what, what is wrong? Do we have to change something in our, in our uh, perception of the phenomenon and in the uh, uh, policy? And this is the reason why uh, I'm talking and talking about uh, policy, policy dilemmas because uh, it is true that probably we need something which looks like a policy shift. And I'll try to uh, uh, explain what, uh, what I have uh, in mind. Um, for um, for uh, many years, uh, we have been saying that, uh, uh, after all, uh, trafficking in human beings uh, is just a, a limited, limited portion of uh, a, a, phenomenon uh, which is uh, l largely uh, linked with uh, migration and also irregular migration. Probably we have to think that if we want to address effectively trafficking in human beings, we have to address a broader 
area of exploitation involving affecting uh, migrant w workers in general, and in particular, uh, migrant workers. Uh, why? Because otherwise it will be more and more difficult even to identify, to detect trafficking cases, because it is true that trafficking is hidden in a you know, larger, in a, um, a bigger um, area in which, ex unfortunately, exploitation, and especially exploitation of migrant workers, is a sort of continuum. And unfortunately, we have to say that it is largely tolerated. And in this exploitation, which has different forms and different levels, uh, going uh, from uh, uh, you know, the, the, the non-compliance with the minimum wage um, regulation to the extreme forms of exploitation that we can identify with trafficking in human beings and forced labor. In, the, in this continuum, probably we have to think that the, uh, strat the, the key um, strategy is prevention. We have to prevent exploitation as far as possible. And we have to consider all these people subject to exploitation uh, as uh, right holders, workers, and right holders. So uh, the emphasis uh, should be on the uh, respect of labor standards for everybody. Uh, and in this uh, uh, you know, uh, light, it will be more difficult for extreme, uh, for exploiters using extreme means of coercion to be uh, hidden and dissimulated in this uh, situation. Of course, this means to raise awareness among public, public opinion, the public opinion uh, about the rights of workers in general and of migrant workers to have on board, and in Ireland, fortunately, trade unions are on board, to have on board uh, the, the, the essential stakeholders uh, in the field of labor market, which means business, uh, uh, employers, uh, uh, employers, uh, trade unions. Uh, of course, uh, there are, um, there are uh, concrete policy measures to be adopted if this uh, you know, approach uh, is correct. Uh, there are consequences in terms, in terms of, uh, uh, con uh, of uh, policy uh, making. Uh, for example, concerning uh, labor market policy, uh, we have to think that the labor market should be carefully regulated and monitored. And this is not obvious <laughs> because there are different approaches mm -hmm. <laughs> to, this, uh, to this problem. Uh, but we, what we see, uh, what we can uh, say from our observatory as uh, uh, people uh, uh, um, dealing with uh, anti-trafficking policy is that, for example, the recruitment agencies more and more play a major role in the trafficking schemes. Uh, very often, recruitment agencies are the criminal segment of the chain. Uh, i give you an example uh, based on uh, the work we, we have done uh, on uh, domestic servitude. There are, uh, for example, in uh, South uh, Southeast Asia, um, there is a huge reality of uh, recruitment agencies for domestic workers uh, providing uh, training, initial training, and sending these uh, young girls uh, abroad to work in uh, situations in which they don't know anything about the language, etc. They are absolutely aware that these people will be subject to extreme exploitation. They know very well that they will, uh, that they, they will be at risk of suicide because there have been many cases uh, like this. When they leave, they are already indebted with the recruitment agency so that for a certain period of time, they have to pay back the debt. 
So you can, you can see very well that it is not only the final exploiter, the employer uh, um, involved in the uh, trafficking scheme, but also the recruitment agency, which, which we can call a criminal pattern, is involved in this, uh, in this uh, ex exploitation. And then the domestic work find a reality which is completely different from what she expected, and uh, she, uh, she um, uh, falls down in this nightmare of, uh, uh, of uh, domestic slavery. Um, so uh, we, uh, my office and I, uh, have uh, you know, uh, analyzed a certain number of good practices. So for example, we look at, uh, with interest, at the experience of the uh, UK Game Master Licensing Authority, uh, the combination of uh, authorization, so the, the agency should meet certain, certain standard uh, according to certain criteria, uh, b but in in time uh, should be uh, will be monitored just to uh, be sure that the agency in practice will comply with this uh, uh, with the, uh, the requirements of the authorization. Uh, uh, if not, the authorization will be uh, withdrawn. Um, the involvement of uh, labor inspectors is another, uh, another important concrete measure. Um, here in Ireland, uh, uh, I have learned these days that there is a good uh, experience of uh, NERA, of the agency um, of labor inspections, and they are um, you know, pioneering uh, a work, uh, especially concerning uh, domestic, uh, domestic work, uh, carrying out uh, controls, checks, um, not necessarily in the households, but, uh, but based on, uh, on the documents that uh, the employer uh, can provide. Um, and in, in this field, there is a lot to do because not always, uh, not in all countries, the mandate of the labor inspectors is broad enough to comprise uh, checks concerning uh, the, the, the illegal work. Uh, so probably there is something to be uh, to be improved, to be uh, um, uh, to be uh, um, you know dealt with in a different uh, in a different way. And of course, uh, um, another powerful tool is also the um, self uh, self organization of workers, and uh, of course the the role of the trade unions is uh, is uh, paramount, uh, but also the the uh, code of conduct uh, um, adopted voluntarily adopted by uh, companies, by business, especially concerning what happens in the supply chain. Because what is true is that the extreme exploitation takes place in the last uh, rings of the supply chain. And very often, the, the big company you know, says, I, I mean, it's not my, it's not my business. Uh, I don't know what happens there. Again, it is about overturning this approach and uh, uh, adopting uh, the opposite approach that everybody has to take responsibility um, concerning what happens in, the, in a sphere in which uh, the company can have uh, control. Um, migration policy, very difficult, uh, uh, very difficult uh, area, but again, uh, I think that uh, it is necessary, and uh, uh, probably this is uh, the, uh, a major task for parliaments, to evaluate the, the consistency between anti-trafficking policy and migration policy. Uh, to be sure, for example, that some elements of social vulnerability are not created by the migration regulation itself. Um, when, for example, a person can, uh, can uh, become irregular uh, for different reasons, even after years of regular stay. And this happens. This happens in uh, more than one country. 
Um, of course, uh, uh, of course, uh, all these uh, this, uh, uh, areas require more careful assessment. If it is true that trafficking, the struggle against trafficking is a priority, all the related policy areas should be monitored and uh, uh, a decision should be made about what it, it is necessary to change. But at the same time, there is a big problem also in terms of prevention concerning the criminal justice response, because the criminal justice response, of course, uh, is uh, aims at punishing the perpetrators, should aim at protecting victims, not to take them for granted that <laughs> this, uh, this goal is uh, equally, uh, uh, equally understood uh, by the competent authorities. But also, uh, the, the, uh, one of the main, uh, the main um, um, goal, goals is to uh, put in place uh, effective uh, deterrence and prevent the crime. Um, the criminal justice response, uh, uh, as, uh, as I said, is very weak. It's very weak everywhere. Um, and uh, one of the reasons of uh, there are many reasons, of course, but one of the reasons uh, is that, uh, in my view, uh, the interpretation and the implementation of the criminal provisions is still too narrow. Too narrow, why? Because, for example, the um, definition of trafficking in human beings in the uh, UN protocol, but also the definition uh, uh, contained in the Irish legislation, which is a very good legislation, uh, is very broad. Why is it applied so narrowly, so rarely? There are a number of, uh, um, of issues there. Uh, and uh, personally speaking, I'm convinced that uh, um, the, the work uh, related to uh, sensitization, uh, um, awareness raising, and training of practitioners is absolutely crucial. And we should try to, uh, to join efforts in the OIC uh, region to, to um, improve this, uh, this uh, the, the, the ability of practitioners to deal with this, uh, with this crime. There are, I could say two, maybe three uh, main issues. The, the first issue is that practitioners have in mind this so-called transfer paradigm. Uh, so if the person, if it is not clear that there is a, a connection between the movement and the subsequent exploitation, this is not trafficking. And actually, if you read the definition, if you read the law, you understand very easily that it is not the case. Because it is true that trafficking has, the definition of trafficking has three main components. The act, the means, and the purpose. The purpose is exploitation, forced labor, slavery, etc. The acts are recruitment, transfer, arboring, receipt. And receipt means also receiving the work performance. So receipt is about the employers, is about the intermediaries. This is even more clear in the Irish, <laughs> in the Irish legislation. But the stereotype is still there. So you read the law, but you have in mind something else if the reality does not correspond with, with what you have in mind, this is not trafficking. And this is one problem. So transfer is not necessary. The second problem is that, again, a matter of stereotype, when people think about trafficking, they think about extreme violence, extreme forms of coercion. Because this stereotypes was, uh, stereotype was built at the beginning of the anti-trafficking uh, the, the anti action, when actually the vast majority of trafficking cases showed this uh, extreme cruelty uh, uh, and violence. Nowadays, 
it, the situation is uh, different, and it is different, especially in uh, labor exploit in the field of labor exploitation, because what prevails is that bondage. As I said, the person is enslaved through means of economic dependency, uh, and also more subtle means of coercion, which means uh, manipulation uh, of a person who is in a situation of multiple dependency. So she or he does not know the language, is completely socially isolated, uh, doesn't know where, where to ask for help, um, without documents, in fear of being an irregular migrant or, or become, uh, uh, having become an irregular migrant, because very often the employers take the document and say, I need this because I have to regularize their, their migration uh, position. And they don't do that, of course. <laughs> so they take advantage of the fear of the person of being um, uh, reported to the authorities. Um, there is a, there is a recent, uh, recent modus operandi we have uh, observed, which is paradoxically the, the withholding of wages, because the, the, the workers are paid for, for, a, for a, a few months, uh, and, and then they are not paid. And if they try, try to leave, they are probably, uh, in, in most cases, uh, severely um, punished, uh, beaten, uh, etc. But there is also the fear to lose what they have you know, earned, what, what they are entitled to. And they should go home without, uh, without any money, without any possibility to, uh, to realize uh, any of, the, the, of their projects. So all these means of subjugation are difficult to understand because the average person <coughs> can walk away. And very often, you know, you see that one of the reasons why a trafficking case is not identified as such is that the person, after all, was free, arrived, arrived freely. And it doesn't matter. It could have arrived free, freely, but if subsequently he or she was victimized and enslaved, this is trafficking anyway. Or she, she or he was free to leave. But where this person could go, where should uh, you know, ask, uh, ask for, uh, for help? Uh, without documents, without, without uh, any, any, any uh, knowledge of the real, uh, of the real uh, situation. So what the definition calls abuse of a position of vulnerability is not very well uh, understood, uh, very well understood. Um, I uh, feel um, very much uh, in, uh, in uh, synteny, uh, I, I, I'm sympathetic with the uh, campaign um, carried out by trade unions and uh, NGOs against forced labor. It played a major role in uh, uh, raising awareness about the existence of uh, labor exploitation, the, the need for better protection of uh, its victims. Uh, in my view, it is important, first of all, to implement the, legisl the legislation we already have. Um, and uh, I, I'm not ready to condone uh, uh, anything of this uh, reluctance um, concerning this reluctance to fully and correctly uh, apply the existing legislation, which I repeat is good. If the government and the parliament will decide to introduce a separate uh, crime of uh, forced labor, of course, this will be an additional uh, useful tool to address a, a, a certain, uh, certain number of, uh, of cases. But for sure, the um, criminal justice response uh, has to be uh, has to be robust um, and uh, has to be adequate to the gravity of the crime because we cannot accept, also in, in the field of sexual exploitation, it, it is the same. Very often cases uh, are there, but not for trafficking, not for uh, slavery, and, uh, but for uh, exploitation of prostitution. And this is not at all, uh, not at all uh, effective. 
uh, because yes, there is a criminal proceeding, but what, what, what is the penalty? What are the investigation techniques used in this case? We need sophisticated investigative techniques because in trafficking cases, first you, you can uh, find a lot of money and confiscate a lot of money because trafficking is a big business. And this is the reason why it has been growing so much. It's the second business of organized crime after uh, drug traffic. Mm -hmm. So there is big money going around. Uh, so it is in the interest of the state to carry out an investigation, an adequate investigation, also because there is big money that can be found that can be used to compensate the victims because after all, the victim can start, can rebuild. Uh, they can rebuild their, their life uh, if they have uh, a compensation for the, the, the harm they have suffered in addition to the salary that they are entitled to having worked very hard for, for um, so many months. Uh, we cannot, uh, so the conditions are that uh, the, the legislation is correctly implemented, that the crime is a serious crime, it is considered a serious crime, and that the uh, assistance and support to victims is effective in the sense that it should be tailored to the needs of every uh, single individual. Of course, I know that in a um, uh, situation of an economic crisis, everything is difficult. Uh, and there are, uh, you know, compatibilities uh, to, be, uh, to be assessed. But I would like to say, when I, when I say that, and I finish here, when I say that uh, a broader area of exploitation should be addressed so that the, the, the perception is not that there are a few victims and the others are irregular migrants, and who cares? Mm. No, there are workers. If they are exploited, they have to uh, get some, uh, they, they, they have rights, so the states should ensure their rights. And in a certain number of cases, I, 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 don't, I don't think that uh, not necessarily all of them have to stay. Not necessarily all of, that, all of them have to be assisted in the way traumatized victim should be assisted, but at least they could have legal aid, a certain, a certain information uh, about how to navigate in the legal system and to obtain what they uh, are entitled to, their salary, for example. Um, so, with this, uh, uh, with, uh, in this, uh, uh, this general approach uh, and uh, these uh, uh, suggestions for policy uh, are also contained in our, <laughs> in our publication. You will find it in, uh, in our website. And of course, I'm uh, very happy to receive your questions. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> now,